Today I saw an article that's concerning the Pope, and so because of that article I wanted to bring to your attention some of the things that you may not know about the Catholic Church that we see in the book of Revelation. So I'm going to start with Revelation chapter 17 verses 3 and 4 where the Lord tells us this. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of the names of blasphemies, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. So as you're going to see as we go through some of these other scriptures, the Lord singles out and gives us specific information about this false world religion that will be riding with the Antichrist, who is known as the beast in the book of Revelation. So let's move on. Now in Revelation chapter 17, verse 5, it says this, And upon her forehead was the name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and the abominations of the earth. So we know that this mystery woman is going to be very influential in the last days. And, of course, the Lord refers to it as Mystery Babylon. Now, in Revelation chapter 17, 9, look at this, and it says this. And here is the mind which hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. So we know that this woman is going to be sitting someplace of importance. And the Lord focuses in on this place, and it's the place of city, or the heads are seven mountains. So we definitely have information of where this location is, as you're going to see. And in Revelation chapter 17, verse 18, look what the Lord tells us. And the woman which thou sawest is a great city, which reigneth over the kings of the earth. In other words, it is not a nation. It is a place, a city. Where is the city? Obviously, it has seven mountains. You're going to find exactly who that is. When you take a look at Vatican City, you'll see where the seven mountains are. They're in Rome, Italy. That is the woman. That's the seat of where the Antichrist is going to have power in the last days. And it makes a lot of sense because when the Lord came in his first coming, he faced the Roman Empire. And we know that in the last days, Jesus, when he comes back again, is going to be facing the revived Roman Empire. And, of course, the seat of this revived Roman Empire will be in the Vatican City, the city with the seven hills. Now, there's definitely forming this woman, this one world false religion, and we see that the Pope is heading it. Now, I'm going to be going through a couple of different popes, and I'm going to be showing you the information showing how this convergence of this false religion is coming together using not sound doctrine to draw people in from other religions to conform to one world religion in the last days. In 1986, Pope John Paul II gathered in Assisi, Italy, the leaders of the world's major religions to pray for peace. There were snake worshippers, fire worshippers, spiritists, animists, Buddhists, Muslims, Hindus, North American witch doctors. I watched in astonishment as they walked to the microphone to pray. The Pope said they were all praying to the same God and that their prayers were creating a spiritual energy that was bringing about a new climate for peace. John Paul II allowed his good friend the Dalai Lama to put the Buddha on the altar in St. Peter's Church in Assisi and with his monks to have a Buddhist worship ceremony there while Shintoists chanted and rang their bells outside. The prophesied world religion is in the process of being formed before our minds in the Vatican is the end. If all men and women, whatever the differences between them, cling to the truth with respect for the unique dignity of every human being, a new world order. Including the United Nations are pursuing the development of a one world religious organization. Today, on the United Nations 55th anniversary, CBN News reporter Andy Griffin takes a look at what's behind this push for a global religious voice. After a while, the drum 
songs, chants, and prayers representing many of the world's leading religions all started to sound alike, somehow losing their flavor in a melting pot of spiritual soup. The first ever Millennium World Peace Summit of religious and spiritual leaders took place at the United Nations in August, and some believe it marked the first major step toward a movement to usher in a global spiritual body that may one day speak for all religions. Robert McGinnis with the Family Research Council says it appears the hidden agenda is to unite people under one religious organization so they will peacefully accept UN goals such as population control, abortion rights, and one world government. Now I want you to take a look at this article here because the worded setting the stage for the one world religion. The authority in a one world, get this, central bank. One world religion run by the false prophet and antichrist along with the monetary system to set up the mark of the beast. And you'll see on the lower left hand corner of this article, which I'll blow up for you, the Vatican calls for central world bank. And notice where the arrows, the Vatican has called for a global public authority and a world central bank to rule over financial affairs in the wake of the engineered economic collapse. So there is information out there pointing to exactly what the Lord reveals to us in the book of Revelation, but there's more. You'll see from this posted article that came out in 2013 about the Pope. And it says this, Pope Francis urged members of all religions and those belonging to, now get this, no church on Wednesday to unite to defend justice, peace, and the environment and not allow the value of a person to be reduced to what he produces and what he consumes. Now this sounds really good, but in light of false doctrine that the Lord told us to look for, the church, the real church, the one that is following sound doctrine, cannot have fellowship with unbelievers. We could love the people, but as far as fellowship of conforming, we cannot do that. We have to stand on the true doctrine. So if Pope Francis talks about uniting all of these world religions coming together, all he is showing us is that the book of Revelation is almost upon us. Now, according to the word of the Lord, you look down below, it says, And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. And as you can see from the photos that I presented here, the Catholic Church is loaded with the gold, loaded with the pearls. Very, very wealthy church, as you're going to see. And again, in detail, as the Lord gave us this information, it's unfolding and people are finally recognizing what is happening, where the Catholic Church is, where they're going. And they are definitely moving in the direction of a one world false religion based on doctrine that has uh, moved away from sound doctrine. Now take a look at this, and again, Revelation 17, 18. And the woman which thou sought is the great city, which reigneth over the kings of the earth. Now I want to show you this article that came out in 2008 because it's very, very significant. I'm going to blow this up for you so you can get a really good view of it. And you'll see this. There is the mayor, the Italian Democratic Party leader, Walter Veltroni today, proposed the creation of a united religions organization based in Rome and said the idea linked both UN Secretary Ben Kaimun as Pope Benedict the 16th. Now it goes on to say, Votoni explained that his idea is the creation of a palace of religions in Rome as the United Nations in New York where representatives of all faiths of the world can meet and talk to each other. Isn't this what the Lord alludes to in the book of Revelation 17, verse 18? Most certainly it is. And if he tells us this false church or this woman will be in the city with the seven hills and you see that there's people making overtures about having a building that looks like the United Nations building but houses the world religions in 
the city with the seven hills, don't you think you ought to pay attention to what the Lord is showing us? Connecting the dots between Bible prophecy and current events? I would hope that you would really see what the Lord is showing us here. Now, what we do know is the church is very, very wealthy. There's no doubt about that. When you take a look at this article, it says the top 10 most stable and prosperous countries. U.S. ranked number 22. But what I wanted you to see, look at the Vatican. All right, Vatican is, take a look, number one. It is a country. A lot of people don't even recognize that the Vatican is a separate country. They are. And they are number one, the most wealthy nation or country in the world. Is this a coincidence at all? I don't believe so, especially when, again, the Lord points to the gold and the precious stones and the pearls. It's just more indications of the truth being exposed to us in these last days prior to the seven-year tribulation. Now, let's move on to the part of the scripture in Revelation 17.4. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with, here we go, gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of the abominations, filthiness of her fornication. And I'm read, I know that I'm repeating the scripture, but I'm going to focus in on another part because I want you to see what the Pope wears on his head. This is the crown, some of the different crowns that the Pope wears. And you'll notice it's identical to what the Lord shows us in the book of Revelation. There's the pearls, the stones, the gold, all embedded into, in the tiara that the Pope wears. And so if you are aware, if you're looking, if you're watching, and you see these things, and you see the connection, what is the conclusion? Well, the conclusion is you don't want to have any part of a one world religion that goes astray from sound doctrine. In chapter 17, verse 4 says, And the woman was arrayed in purple. So the Lord has given us specific colors to look for to identify this woman, this false church, the church of the last days that will be riding with the Antichrist. So, as an example of this color purple coming from the city with the seven hills, which is Rome, where the Vatican is, let me show you what the Pope is wearing. Ash Wednesday in Rome. Pope Francis leads a procession through the streets to begin the pre-Easter season of Lent when Christians are called on to fast. Now, I just wanted to show you this briefly so that you could see that the Pope is definitely wearing the colors that Jesus warns us about in the book of Revelation. And when you put all of the facts together, the gold cup that the church is using, the scarlet color, the purple color, and the fact that it, it is in the city with the seven hills pointing to Rome. The conclusion is the false church, part of this last days woman church that will be riding with the Antichrist in the last days is part of the Roman Catholic Church. Now, of course, the Vatican also has a throne. You'll see that Pope Benedict was sitting on it. I have pictures of it, and I took videos of it for you so that you could see this throne. And it doesn't look anything like a church. A church with a throne should look like But it definitely looks more like the pit of hell as you're going to see for yourself. So let me play this, and you'll see that it definitely looks demonic.
So you can see for yourself the throne. And again, I suggest that you Google this and hopefully you'll find the same pictures that I have found in the videos with it. But it is there and it definitely looks like the armpit of hell, that's for sure. It doesn't look like something that you would want to sit in front of, that's, that's for sure. Here's a better picture of it, a more clear picture of it. And when you take a look, you can see that it almost looks like there's people woven between it, burning or something in hell. And at night, they light up the lights so it looks like it's on fire. So that it looks like hell itself. And again, you'll see the Pope there sitting on that throne. And you'll also see the scarlet colors that the priests uh, are wearing there. And of course, all of these colors are mentioned in scripture by the warning of Jesus Christ as, a, as I've already shown you. Now concerning the new Pope, Pope Francis, there was an article that came out, you'll see that article in May on the 22nd of 2013. Pope Francis says atheists who do good are redeemed, not just Catholics. And the only way that the Bible, the only way that Jesus tells you that you can be redeemed is how? Well, take a look at your Bible and read John 14, 6. Because Jesus answered, this is what it says, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So if you're an atheist and you don't believe in Jesus, you haven't received Jesus Christ, sound doctrine from Jesus himself says you cannot go into heaven. And so if the Pope from the Vatican, from the city of seven hills, that holds the gold, is very rich, and has the purple and the scarlet, if this person is telling you something foreign from what Jesus says, you should know that it is Antichrist statements, and it is statements leading the blind into the kvass. And the blind are those who don't see the true salvation of Jesus Christ. The blind who reject the word found in John 14, 6. Now with this, uh, there's an article, a news broadcast that came after this article the Pope Francis says the atheists who do good are redeemed, not just the Catholics. Watch this. Good news for all you atheists out there. Jesus is still going to redeem you. During his homily at Wednesday Mass, Pope Francis emphasized the importance of doing good as a principle that unites all humanity. In his sermon, he said, The Lord has redeemed all of us, all of us, with the blood of Christ, all of us, not just Catholics, everyone, even the atheists, everyone. The speech went viral, reaching number two position on Reddit. Pope Francis's attitude now, it's interesting because it stands in stark contrast to that of former Pope Benedict. And as you can see from Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, it says this, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not of worse, lest any man should boast. And as you can see in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust, shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And that's exactly what we see coming from Pope Francis. Now the Lord warns in his word about homosexuality. And I know that there's a lot of people who don't even want to talk about this subject because it offends them or they're afraid to say anything about it. But our commission is to love all people. And if a person is a homosexual person, gay or lesbian, we're commanded to love them. But we're also commanded to tell them the truth. And the truth speaks for itself. And when you look at what the Lord warned about, then you either have to make the decision whether you're going to follow what the Lord said or deny it. Now, if you deny it, obviously, it's your choice. And you're going to have to face the Lord on the judgment seat day. And I'm praying that before you get to that point, that you will realize Jesus as your Messiah. Because if you purposely go against the Lord and reject his salvation, reject Jesus, reject the works at the cross, that free gift, then you are making your own place in the lake of fire on judgment day. 
Let's see what the Lord has to say about homosexuality. Leviticus chapter 18, verse 22. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination. Romans chapter 1, verses 24 through 28. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the, the truth of God into a lie, and worshipped and served the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another. Men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 Or do you not know that wrongdoers will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who have sex with men. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 10 The sexually immoral men who practice homosexuality, enslavers, liars, perjurers, and whatever else is contrary to sound doctrine. And so as I said, you have a choice. You can go to heaven and be in paradise with the Messiah, the Lord Yushia, Jesus Christ, or you can pave your way to hell and reject the living word of God. It's up to you. God has given you that free will and that free choice. Now, in the matters of Pope Francis, on March 6, 2014, the Pope, as you can see from this headline, says this in this article, Pope Francis hints at the Catholic Church rethink on gay civil unions. And this is another part of that article. Pope Francis has hinted that the Catholic Church should recognize gay civil unions and called for women to have a greater role in the church in an interview that marks the first year as pontiff. So we have seen the popes coming together, trying to form a one world religion, bringing in atheists, telling the world that you can be saved even if you're not Catholic. And these are foreign words that we find in the Bible. And so if he's bringing in these world religions, including the Muslims who don't recognize Jesus, Yoshia as the Messiah, then it's only a matter of time before we see the Pope engaging in gay activities or at least embracing the gay community. And again, no one should hate anyone. And I'm not advocating anybody to hate the gay or the lesbian people. What I'm saying is you should love them and be praying for them, that they would see the error of the ways and their lifestyle contrary to the word of the Lord. And in praying and being kind to them, uh, you would show the example of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I would say that if anybody hates the gay population, or anyone in that persuasion, that you're just as bad as the rest of the sinners because you are doing something other than the Lord said to do. You're supposed to love each and every person. You're supposed to have the compassion. But with that goes responsibility. That we're supposed to tell them what Jesus said. When Jesus gave the commission to go out into the world, he didn't say, leave parts of my word out. He told us, give everything, give the full counsel of his word. And so part of that counsel of his word deals with the homosexual agenda. And so again, you have the choice of what you will do with this information. And in closing, let me just say this. The Lord gave us very, very specific information 
in Matthew 24, verses 36 through 38. It says this, But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage. Notice that he made a distinction there of marrying and in giving in marriage. Obviously, if you're marrying a woman, you're giving in marriage, but then he goes on to tell us, and giving in marriage, making that distinction. And going on, it says this, Until the day that Noah entered the ark, and knew not until the flood came, and took them all away, and so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. So there is coming a time where this false church where this false doctrine that it spread through the church and the people who received it are going to have to pay for their rejection of the word. And we know that this time is coming because our generation now is a carbon copy of Noah's generation and we have never seen this since Noah's generation. And it isn't by chance that all of the prophecies that Jesus spoke about in Matthew chapter 24 are taking place in one single generation. Jesus pointed out in Matthew chapter 24 that the generation who saw the rebirth of Israel would not pass away. In other words, we are going to see Christ come back, this generation, and it's the generation who again, as I said, has become a carbon copy of Noah's generation. Now, if you see the Roman Catholic Church coming together, driving force for one world religion, fulfilling what we see in the book of Revelation, and you put it together with what Jesus showed us about the last days and the Noah's generation coming together, you should understand that your time is limited on this earth because the Lord will be coming back soon and you need to make your place in heaven now because what you don't want to happen is to be missed out on the rapture of the church when the Lord calls. And we don't know exactly when that's going to be, but we know from the word. That because the Lord told us, when you shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. And he tells us that when we see all these things, look up because your redemption draws nigh. And certainly, I am looking up because all of the things that the Lord talked about were seen in the news. And I'm connecting those dots between the current events and Bible prophecy almost every day at my site where I invite you to come. In closing, let me say this. Be like Christ and love all people. Pray for your enemies. And just stand firm, even if they hate you. Stand firm in the love of Jesus Christ, because in his power, we conquer. We don't conquer by throwing fists or shooting or swords. We conquer by love. And there's no greater power than the power that God has granted us via the Holy Spirit living in us. It's the same power that Jesus demonstrated when he walked on the face of this earth in his first coming. And we are going to demonstrate each day. Those that long to demonstrate that, they can have the demonstration of God's holy power in them as they commune with other people and share the good news of Jesus Christ. This is Frank DeMora from the End Times Research Ministry saying thank you for giving me the time to share my Jesus, Yushia, with you. God bless.